So my name is Christine Perry from Scale Labs. And you, most of you have already met Ethy, right? Yes? Well, this is one of the bounties. Um, so we're going to tell you how to win one of these bounties and some of the other cash prizes, too, because let's cut right to the chase. We have bounties that you can win by hacking on Scale. Two of them are for 1,000, and six are for 500 each. Now, how do you go about doing this? Well, before getting into that, I want to talk to you about the problem that Scale is looking to solve here, and why it's relevant to you at the hackathon. And at Scale, one of the things that we're looking to solve is a scalability problem, which to us maps directly to a usability problem. One, because most of you that have already hacked on um, Ethereum, you've already ran into the issues of transaction costs, storage costs, and of course, speed being an issue. Now, this is also going to be an issue at the hackathon because, as you can imagine, as you're hacking, every time you have to test something on RinkV or another test net that's going to take forever to deploy, you're wasting time. And with scale, not only are we solving these problems in the real world, we're also solving these problems when you're just hacking and testing out your solutions to begin with. So what does this mean? How can you get around this today? Well, typically, what you can do is you can offload computation to a centralized server. You can offload storage to a storage network, such as IPFS. You can wait for Ether 2.0. Or you can use an elastic sidechain. Now, before jumping into the code, I want to also show exactly how our network works, because I think it makes more sense to conceptualize it before actually hacking on scale. And just like Ethereum, one of the things that we do is we have a network of many nodes within our system. And what happens is we are grouping together a subset of these to create your scale chain. And your scale chain is not shared resource for anyone else um, that's hacking on scale as well. So what do you get with a scale chain? Well, you can deploy your smart contracts directly to scale that are written in Solidity. Or you can use file storage. If you're familiar with IPFS, it's a simpler setup where you can just use an NPM package to get started. And let's say you still want to talk back and forth to Ethereum. Well, we give you the option to be able to do that. Now, as I mentioned, the scale chain is just yours. But based off of how we've created our system, multiple nodes can run multiple scale chains as represented here. So over time, what you'll have is a crossover of scale chains on each node. And Jack, he has a section tomorrow on this. He's the CEO of Scale Labs right there. And he's going to explain more about the node architecture. So today, I'm just going to give a high-level overview of what that's like. So one of the things that we also want to do is make sure that developers, as they're developing long-term on scale, they're not paying for more than they need at any given time. So you're able to grow with us. If you are just testing out your idea or prototyping, you can start with a small chain. Now, what does that mean? It means you get less transactions per second um, and less storage, but it means that you're only paying for what you need at that given time. And when you want to upgrade to a medium or large chain to go all the way up to 2,000 transactions per second, we're able to make that seamless transaction for you. So, because we're at a hackathon, though, I want to get into the code really soon and show you exactly how this works. But before that, one of the things I want to highlight is how easy it is to get up and running. So most people, if you've already deployed to Ethereum, you've used Web3 or Ether.js or something similar and um, put a connector to that using um, Infura or some other endpoint. Well, it's the same process for deploying to scale. You don't have to change anything in your code unless you're using Truffle, you change two lines and you deploy your smart contracts directly to scale instead. So what you're able to do is offload some computation directly to our scale chain and have it run a lot faster and also a lot cheaper than it would otherwise run on Ethereum. Now, one of the things that um, we talked about earlier today was that you can use interchain messaging. And what that does is it gives us a direct connection to Ethereum. So in that instance where you're tokenizing your application, are there any developers in here working with ERC-20, 721, or anything like that? OK, we have a few. We have a few. Well, a lot of those tokens, you typically want to leave on Ethereum. And what we do is we create clones on the scale chain side, which you're then able to transact with without having to incur any sort of gas costs. But then when you're ready to exit, you can exit from the scale chain. We burn that clone. 
and then you're able to free up that, um, that token back to the main user. So this essentially is what it looked like. You have your smart contracts. Typically, you'll have more than one. You can deploy it directly to Ethereum. And then whenever you would like, you can interact with Ethereum and send that token directly back to the user. So let's show you what all this looks like in the code. So I'm going to switch over here. And one of the things I want to do is kind of talk about this application that we built. It's a simple application. It's called Rock, Paper, Scissors. What you're able to do is interact with a smart contract called Rock, Paper, Scissors, written in Solidity, and basically um, execute transactions directly on the blockchain. So right now I'm using MetaMask, and with MetaMask, it's connected to RinkB. Now, everyone's familiar with this. When you actually click a transaction and you want to execute it, and let's go ahead and do that together, let's select Rock. We have this gas fee for just doing a move. I'm going to go ahead and click Confirm and wait, and wait, and wait, because this is what you have to do when you are developing on Ethereum, on Ethereum or RinkB. You don't get the transaction back in real time. Now, as a, game, as a gamer or someone using this application, this is not the experience that I would want or the experience I want to create for anyone, right? So this is going to take some time to come back. But when it does, oh, there we go, the user is then able to go through and continue the game. Now imagine doing that with more of a live action game or um, you know, a, a, a game where you're playing against a component. You would have to wait 45 seconds or longer before the transaction comes back, and that's not a good experience. So let's switch that up. Now at scale, what we did was we created an easy way for you to get access to the scale chains. So if you just go to scale.network forward slash ETH Waterloo, that will redirect you to a place where you can fill out the form and get access to a scale chain right away. Now with that, our documentation gives you a quick getting started guide for how to get up and running. It's a one, two, three step process. You get your scale chain, well that's super easy, fill out the form. You migrate your smart contracts, changing just two lines of code. If you're using Truffle, just two lines of code. And then you execute transactions using Web3. So as you can see, not much is really changing for you. But what you're gaining at this hackathon is save time. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. But before getting to that, let's switch over to the code and show you how easy it is to actually make this change. So most people are familiar with what this looks like. Let's go ahead and add another line for scale. And I cheated a little bit. I already have the scale chain ready. So I'm going to go ahead and plop it in here. And then, because it's just like deploying to RinkB, I don't really have to think much beyond just copying what's already here, pasting, and just changing, again, a few lines of code. And that's it. That's all it requires for you to get up and running with deploying to scale and potentially running one of the bounties, including Ethy. So what does this look like in action? And what I want to do is show you a direct comparison of deploying to RinkB versus deploying to scale. So truffle.deploy, reset, network, RinkB. Let's go ahead and let that run. And this is going to be a very similar process that we're all familiar with. One, either we will get an error. Or two, it will actually execute. And looks like, yep, extra comma. Thank you. Thanks for the co-coding back there. All right. So here we go. Let's go ahead and wait. And again, because you are only limited by time here at this hackathon, you have, what, less than three days. Waiting each time you make a change to your smart contract for it to deploy is not a good experience. So we'll let that run in tandem, and I'm going to have another window open for the exact same project. And this time, just deploy it to scale. Now, we'll put this side by side, so that way you can see. But essentially, while we're still waiting on the first transaction or the first smart contract to deploy, scale in real time is able to deploy my three or four smart contracts in near real time. So you're saving a lot of time here at this hackathon. But more importantly, let's go here and 
we'll go ahead and start this again. I'm going to go back to my application, and let's switch this up. Instead of in interacting with rink B, we're going to interact with scale. And here, let's give that some time to refresh. Who wants to play with me now? What move should we select? Scissors. Scissors? All right. Good move. So one of the things you'll notice is that scale doesn't introduce the idea of gas for end users. Why? Because a lot of times it just doesn't make sense for them to have to know about it. They just want to play the game. But more importantly, instead of having to wait you know, 45 seconds or however long it took me to talk my way through um, Rink Beats returning a transaction, we're able to get it back in near real time. So not only are you saving time by deploying to scale and testing out your idea here, you're also saving time each time you want to process a transaction in near real time, which is currently not achievable today by just Rink B alone. So, what we're able to do here is give you an option of being able to use all the same tools that you can with Ethereum on scale. But beyond that, if you look at our documentation, we have other really cool things here as well, such as being able to use file storage. Now, file storage, we package this up pretty nicely in an NPM package, which means that you can just use JavaScript to interact with the blockchain. So if this is your first time interacting with blockchain technology, you don't have to dive directly all the way in. You can just start here and start to upload and download files directly to the blockchain. And we've done it in a way that's more um, or less like an, um, an API to give you access to those files that you're storing. And these files can be as simple as an image or as complex as a trained model for machine learning. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before opening it up for questions, is partnerships. Because one of the things that's apparent in this space, just like in any other space currently developing on Web 2.0, is that you typically can't build an application with just one technology, right? You have to layer them on. And we encourage you to do the same thing here. We have great partners um, with Portis, Torus, Bitsky, Terminal, and Maker. The top three at the top, what they do is they allow you to have a better way to onboard your users. So instead of your users having to worry about using MetaMask or downloading MetaMask, it's an API-based approach where the DApp developer codes it up, and suddenly you're able to add a button just like a Google login or Facebook login directly to your application. It's a lot simpler and a more user-friendly flow for your users. Portis is here today, so definitely drop by and um, you know, talk to them. The next one I want to talk about is one that I recently fell in love with, Terminal. They allow you to be able to actually debug your code in real time because if any of you have ever tried debugging a blockchain application, it is a nightmare. The reason being is because you have to remember to have your console open. If you don't, you lose a transaction. If you um, somehow you know, close down your application, you then have to figure out a way to then um, you know, cure, well, go through all the event logs. With Terminal, what they do is they give you an API approach where they're able to keep track of all those, um, those transactions for you. And so you don't lose anything. You're able to log into their portal and see everything that's happening in real time and historically as well. Now, I just want to wrap it up with the bounties again because one of the things that I just want to make sure that everyone's aware of is that um, we do have bounties here at um, the hackathon, including Ethy. So please, please um, try hacking on scale and let us know if you have any questions. We'll be at the booth today and tomorrow and also on our Discord. All right. Um, any questions about anything? No? Oh, one. Uh, quick question. Can yeah. you talk a little more about that endpoint? And mm -hmm. if you have to add it to MetaMask, is that the endpoint you can get after filling out the form, or what, what's going on there? Good question. So, yes. With MetaMask, MetaMask is a way where the end user has to take more responsibility about being able to switch between networks. So they have to switch to RinkB, they have to switch to Kovan, they have to switch to whatever network you're currently deployed to to use a transaction, and the same thing goes for scale. It doesn't change. Now, this is where um, it comes in handy to try out one of those API integrations that we were just talking about, such as Portis or Bitsky or Taurus, 
because one of the things they allow you to do is code it directly in the back end where the end user doesn't have to do anything. And the API-based wallet is able to just make the switch for you, as well as create the wallet and maintain all of that. So, yeah. yeah. Question? So for anyone asking, what's the optimal time to get their scale chain and start testing the work you do? Immediately, today. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately today. Well, um, one of the things is like if you come to our desk, all of our flower, uh, all of our flyers has the um, you know website to actually get the scale chain from. So um, come pick up the flyer, um, get the website to the scale chain, and you'll be able to get one directly on your own. Yeah. Are the transactions currently being validated on scale chain? Mm. So what we do is we set up um, nodes or servers directly on our side to be able to run the consensus. Because one of the things I highlight today that Jack will go into more detail tomorrow is that we have a consensus protocol that runs and finalizes the transactions. It's layered with BLS signatures um, and a whole lot of other really great cryptography and math. But that is actually what is running the transactions and um, actually adding them to the blockchain. So for the hackathon, it is four nodes that's doing that. But um, when you actually get a scale chain as a DAP developer that's deploying um, you know, into production, it's going to be 16 nodes. And so those 16 nodes will rotate over time. So that way, over time, essentially, all potentially 1,000 nodes within a network will work for your application. Mm -hmm. And it's decentralized. Everyone knows it's open. Yeah. All right. Well. Thanks for your attention, guys. And yeah, feel free to drop by the booth and get a scale chain. <laughs>